As a chart-topping teen idol, Donny Osmond became known for his wholesome, squeaky-clean image, but there was a dark side. From crippling stage fright to nearly losing an eye, Osmond's rise to the top definitely had its downsides. You might think that Donny Osmond's teenage years were the stuff of dreams. After all, he was a chart-topping pop star adored by millions across the world. But in an interview with Closer Weekly in 2021, he claimed that the fantasy of superstardom was far removed from the reality of a situation. He told the outlet, I was just so lonely. You go back to the early 1970s and you've got literally thousands of screaming girls at those concerts yelling your name. But then you go back to a very quiet hotel or the bus. I learned what loneliness is in life. Osmond's isolated experiences meant that he was able to relate with another pop idol who found fame at a very young age, Justin Bieber, and a single lonely in particular. Osmond told People, I remember crawling up into a ball, in a corner, and crying my eyes out really from loneliness. So I know what Justin's going through, what he's been through. You have to go through hell and back. While out on tour in Sweden at the age of just eight years old, a deeply homesick Osman wrote a letter to his mother revealing just how hard he was finding life on the road. Unfortunately, instead of being reassured or rescued, the child star was forced to suffer a beating at the hands of his strict disciplinarian father. Indeed, after learning about Donnie's bout of homesickness, George Osman decided that the best course of action was to both physically attack him and deliver a lecture on the art of being grateful. You might expect that he was scarred for life by this punishment but in a 2001 interview with The Guardian, Donnie revealed that he doesn't hold a grudge. In fact, he still believes his dad is a hero. He told the outlet, I got over that quickly and realized my father is not perfect, but he did the best he could. Osmond had sold millions of records, topped the charts, and enjoyed small screen success with his sister Marie on their variety show, all by the age of 21. But it was around this age that he was dismissed by the industry as a has-been, and it took another 10 years for the former teen idol to make his naysayers eat their words. In a 2022 interview with Fox News, Osmond recalled how hard it was to leave his child star beginnings behind, saying, It is a curse when you hit it big as a little kid, because everyone wants to keep you in that pigeonhole. It's very difficult to break out of that teeny bopper career, but thank goodness that through perseverance and a lot of support from my fan base, it happened. Osmond was advised to change his name and even deliberately get arrested in order to shatter his squeaky clean image. However, he wisely came to the conclusion that a life in the tabloids wasn't for him. He told Fox News, I decided long ago that I wasn't going to do it with scandals, trickery, or promotional campaigns. I was going to do it with my music, which is a really difficult way to do it. But it happened, and it took me 10 years. But I wanted the music to speak for itself. And then you just say, give me the strength to just play these cards and make something of my life. Osmond appears to have one of the most stable marriages in all of Hollywood. The puppy love singer is still together with his teenage sweetheart, Debbie Glenn. But there was one close family member who believed that the star would risk alienating his fan base if he took himself off the market. Osmond told The Guardian in 2017, By the time I was 19, I knew I was in love and had to do something right for me. When I told my dad, he said, Well, there goes your career, but this is ushering in your personal life. Undeterred, the pair exchanged their vows in the spring of 1978. Osmond acknowledged that his dad George may have had a point, seeing as he didn't score another solo chart hit for another decade. However, he still had no regrets about walking down the aisle. He told The Guardian, Debbie is an amazing person to be with. If I hadn't married her, I'd have been a mess. Now I had someone who understood me and with whom I could build a future together. So life is great and I don't want to lose that. One of the downsides of being adored by millions is that your fans often have no concept of physical boundaries, and Osmond learned that the hard way during the height of Osmond mania, when he was nearly blinded by an overzealous admirer. The drama occurred during a visit to Manchester. Donnie explained to Metro, I was walking into this hotel, and all these fans started rushing towards me, and one girl was just making a beeline. She had an autograph book in one hand and a pen in the other, and she wraps her arms around and the pen came around and hits me right in the eye. Osmond went on to say that he still thinks about the encounter to this day. He told the outlet, She had no idea. She was just overwhelmed in the moment. But I was very lucky I didn't lose one eye and get blinded in the other. It was close to a disaster. 
Osmond's star had fallen so much that by the late 1980s, it was considered to be career suicide even to have a brief association with him. Just ask Def Leppard guitarist Phil Collin, who was advised to take his name off a record he'd worked with Osmond on. In a 2007 piece about his all-time favorite albums for The Guardian, Osmond revealed that he'd been such a big fan of Def Leppard's hysteria that he asked Collin to contribute to his 1990 LP, Eyes Don't Lie. The rocker obliged and, as Osmond told The Guardian, contributed a fantastic guitar solo. Unfortunately, he wasn't allowed to let anyone know who was responsible for this active six-string wizardry. Osmond explained to The Guardian, "'A few weeks later, I got a call from him to say that we had a problem. He couldn't have his name on the album because Def Leppard didn't want to be associated with me. It's a sad situation, but music is 80% image and perception.'" On paper, Osmond's turn in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat is one of the big success stories of his career. Donnie played the leading man in the stage production more than 2,000 times across the space of five years, and was even asked to star in the 1999 movie version. But on a personal level, it was a period plagued by insecurities, panic attacks, and general anxiety. While speaking to People in 2022, Donnie had this to say about his mental health battles in the 1990s. It's like you're standing in the middle of an intersection, and here comes a massive semi right at you at 90 miles an hour, and you can't do anything about it. I would walk on stage knowing I was going to die. It was horrible. Luckily, Osmond had the support of his family, most notably wife Debbie, to help him cope during this difficult period. And he advised anyone else going through similar problems to seek professional help too. He told people, so many people fall into a trap of desperation and depression. I've been there, and you can't just brush it off. There is light at the end of the tunnel. My wife was my rock so the whole time because without her, I don't know what would have happened to me." Since he only spent a month in public education, Osmond managed to avoid being bullied at school. But it was a different story when it came to the nation's press. While speaking to British talk show Loose Women in 2016, Osmond recalled one particularly brutal takedown which still has an effect on him to this day. He told the hosts, I'm one of the biggest teeny boppers in the world, and Rolling Stone magazine comes out with an article which says, the worst day in rock and roll history was the day Donny Osmond was born. A teenager is just trying to figure out who he is. That's the ultimate bullying. It really hurt me." Osmond went on to admit that he's been targeted throughout his life due to his famous family and strict moral values, but luckily, he now has an answer for his critics. He added, "...and it's like, in your face, everybody. I'm the last one laughing. I'm the last one standing." Osmond had to go under the knife in 2015 thanks to a hemorrhagic polyp which formed on his right vocal cord. In an interview with People following the procedure, Osmond explained how the lesion developed in the first place, and it wasn't from using his voice incorrectly. He told the outlet, "...this is a common misconception. Opera singers get this. It's just the fact that I use my instrument a lot." Osmond also took to Facebook beforehand to let his followers know that he'd be a little quieter than usual, writing, "...the recovery is going to be quite tough. Three weeks of absolutely no sound, not even a whisper. I'm certainly going to have a lot of time on my hands to read the comments that you post. I can hardly wait to hear what you have to say." Donny Osmond and the rest of his large family were left devastated in 2010 when nephew Michael Bryan, the son of sister Marie Osmond, committed suicide. Remarkably, the siblings returned to work soon after, resuming their variety show residency in Las Vegas. In an interview with Entertainment Tonight, Donny revealed that performing was helping Marie come to terms with her loss. "'Our dressing rooms are right next door to each other. I can hear her crying, and that hurts. What's amazing is that just minutes after she's cried, she'll come out of the dressing room, perfect and ready to go. He then added this about his sister's resilience. I admire her, and I'm so glad she had the Donnie and Marie show and QVC and all these other things that kept her busy. She's been able to pick herself up and survive. I had to choose to keep living for my other children. In 2018, Donnie tragically lost another nephew when Troy Osmond, the son of his brother Merrill, died in his sleep at his parents' house in Utah. In December 2018, Jimmy Osmond suffered a stroke while performing as Peter Pan at the Birmingham Hippodrome, but the singer decided against letting anyone other than his wife and children pay him a visit while he got better. Following his brother's health scare, Donnie took to X, formerly known as Twitter, writing, "'Thank you all for your thoughts and prayers on behalf of my little brother Jimmy. I love you, brother.'" But along with many of his siblings, Donnie was banned from seeing Jimmy in person. In an interview with Express, Meryl had this explanation for why Jimmy wasn't allowing his siblings to visit him. He's hurting pretty bad. He's in the States. But doctors won't even let the family in on it yet. The severity of it? None of us know. It's the way his family wants it. Jimmy has been through a lot, and he just wants to be all by himself right now. We're all giving him space." Jimmy subsequently took a lengthy break from the world of show business to fully recuperate. 